Good day and welcome to the first round of the National Invitation Tournament. I'm Brad Nessler and joining me as always is Dick Vitale. This should be a good one between the LSU Tigers and the Seton Hall Pirates. We've got two very good small forwards here tonight that will be matched up against one another. Number 14 might be one of the best floor leaders in the country right now. Starting across from him tonight will be another great player that knows how to run a squad out there. It should be a great matchup throughout the night. Well, partner, I say let's get to the action on the court, and we'll see how this one plays out. The Pirates know they're looking at a good one tonight, Dick. What are the keys for them to win? I would think that the keys are as follows. First of all, the point guard has to take control of the game, and he has to dictate the tempo and the pace. Second, don't get lazy, man. Attack the basket, grab the glass, get after the board. Lastly, keep it simple defensively and play as a unit. I think you're dead on, Mr. Vitale. Let's see where this one started. They go into the low block. With the jump. I'll tell you, the jump hook so effective, especially against a player. Very difficult to block that shot. Pressure that basketball. From beyond the arc, gets it to go. Unloads a three, sinks the shot. And the ball goes out of bounds. Patience with the ball as the offense regroups. Tempo of the game, really important here. You want to establish some good tempo. With the jumper. And nice looking jumper in the lane. Showing maturity by waiting for the O to regroup. They go inside and now back outside. I tell you, inside, outside action. And has it rejected. Defense did a great job with that block shot. Stays in control until they regroup the offense. Got an open look if he wants it from right at the circle. The Tigers have a hot hand right now that's scoring for them at the moment. They need to keep feeding the ball. It's simple. On the outside, number 14, pump fakes. Number 31 takes the pass. I wonder if he's ever going to get any help from his teammates, Dick. He's doing it all in them some. At some point, his team is going to have to step up and play at his level. He's carrying them right now. He lets it go. He buries it. That's incredible. <laughs> Trying to feed the low block. Executes the baby hook. I tell you, the jump hook so effective, especially against a big post player. Very difficult to block that shot. Number three takes the feed. Gave it up for two. Perfectly executed. Down inside. He was looking for the call, and he got it on himself. Offensive foul. Definitely an offensive foul, no doubt about it. He beats him to the spot. Now trying to feed the low block. Here's the three ball. Sinks it. Ball hander might be in trouble here. The ball goes out of bounds. Full house and a packed crowd, and they are into it tonight. I tell you, what a motion, what an edge for the home team. Trying to go inside. And they got it on the low block. He shoots from the top of the circle. That was nice. They scored seven in a row. What a 
great steal. Defensive player was really right on top of that basketball. What should they do here? Pull it down and see what's going on out there. There's definitely some miscommunication happening. He pump fakes. He tries the three ball. Way off target. And he scores despite the hack. Trying to get that ball movement, get that good spacing. There's the trap. He's got a nice shot fake. Puts up the tray. LSU has to get somewhat of a run here. Maintaining it is the key, though. They've got to continue to make hustle plays at both ends of the work. Gets the pass. High post screen. So effective that screen. Three. I want to thank you for joining us tonight with Dick Vitale and Aaron Andrews. I'm Brad Nessler. On the outside, the power forward the ball. Trying to draw some contact. Watch your head, young fella. Great steal. I think the pressure was just too much. Tremendous pressure, just enough to force the steal. Defensively doing a great job down there, and he's winning that battle there. I think it's very essential that you establish a close position by moving that offensive player out, and that's how he's winning that battle. Number 14 gets the ball. For the bucket. They're lighting it up from the field right now, Dick. They're in a dangerous rhythm, my friend. Dangerous. Dangerous for the defense if they keep it up. Looking for a good shot. Harm Full house. And a packed crowd, and they are into it tonight. I tell you, what emotion, what an edge for the home team. And he'll kick it back outside. On the dribble, gives it up. He keeps his dribble as they reset. Goes up for two. He puts it in with contact and all. Dickey's going to kick it back out there from down on the low block. I tell you, a post player has to be able to read what the defense gives you. Makes the move and goes up strong, but that's an offensive foul. Dave. He's out of control, baby, out of control. Check out this young man, Brad. He's taunting the opponent. Dick, they're doing a great job defensively down there in the low block. I tell you, what a defensive player. He's in the battle on the because he's beating him to the spot. They'd like to get it inside to the low block. Unable to so far. Nice job of packing it in defensively. Yeah, really doing a great job packing it in. Then a great job of anticipating that lateral pass. Basic. Tries a three. Scores. He can't let this guy have the uncontested shot. He just got to dig in and play some D. Dump it inside. With the fake. Gave it up. Tries for two. Can't get the shot to go. Turnaround jumper. I tell you, what a nice turnaround jump shot. Soft as velvet, fading away, impossible to block. <laughs> On 
the dribble, gives it up. Nice fake. He fires away. Man, he lured the defender to the screen, giving him time to shoot the sweet J. He tries to knock down the three. Great shot. That's so important to a good offensive set. It's even more important to have talented guards like they have. Yeah, that helps. Number one with the foul. First team foul. Let's check in courtside with Aaron Andrews. Aaron? Well, Brad, in regards to our player matchup, it's a matter of one guy focusing and taking advantage of shot opportunities. He seems to be making the most of it tonight. That one puts the personal in personal. Picks up the foul. I tell you, poor play defensively. Look at the facial expression. Dickey's going to kick it back out there from down on the low block. I tell you, post player has to believe what the defense gives you. For the bucket. It's early here, but it's been a blowout so far, Dick. It's definitely heading in that direction, Brad. Bench comes up with a play. What a terrific play to stop that spin move. Goes up for two. I tell you, once you get deep position like that, it's automatic. Fronts him first, Dick, and then works behind. Yeah, he's playing from behind him because that tells me right there they don't respect him as an offensive player. And they made an error, obviously. But they don't have the great respect, so they're saying, you know what? Let him get the ball and let him try to beat us. Got a wide open look. Puts it up. No good. Gave it up. The Pirates of Seton Hall have had some great success back in the late 80s. The high point was most likely that one-point overtime loss to Michigan in the national championship. Hey, that was, that was a great game, Brad. Seton Hall's success during those years put the Pirates on the map. My alma mater. With anticipation defensively. was like a NASCAR wreck and no whistle. Wow, no call. You like that NASCAR. Hey, where's Mr. Petty? <laughs> They'll work it around the arc. Rejected. Defense did a great job with that block shot. The ball goes out of play. Everybody into the act right now, and you can tell by the cheerleaders on the sideline how things are going. Is that what makes college so special? The enthusiasm of the cheerleaders, the mascot, everybody involved. That's just great hustle and great defense with a steal. I tell you what, they telegraphed that pass, and he read it perfectly defensively as a post player. Here's a double team. He puts up the J, knocks down the two. Number 33, his modest performance is bringing down his confidence level. He needs to take a deep breath, refocus, and get after it. Works the perimeter. Spacing so important. Get 15 to 17 feet apart. He shoots from the angle. Off the rim and no good. Dickey's doing a nice job defensively fronting him. Well, it's the key is to really beat him to the spot, get help from the help side, and really do a great job seeing ball and man. Looking for contact. Up, easy one. Number 
He does the sweet fake shot. Control of the ball. Stolen ball. Moving it around the perimeter. He shoots from left to the circle. Perfectly designed, perfectly executed, easy basket. I'll tell you, he missed the post guy. The post guy had the great angle, was locking on a box. There's a high screen. Get that good spacing. Tries for two. LSU are on a bit of a run. Let's see how long they can keep it on, Brad. Stolen away. And the ball goes out of play. High post flashes. Number 33, modest play is having a negative effect on his composure. Emotionally, he couldn't be much lower on it. Someone may have to talk to him. He needs to get back on track. Gave it up. Goes for the deep one. Drains it. That's a 7 nothing run. On the dribble, gives it up, gets up to make the block, and the ball goes out of bounds. Everybody into the act right now, and you can tell by the cheerleaders on the sideline how things are going. Isn't that what makes college so special? The enthusiasm of the cheerleaders, the mascot, everybody involved. Number 14 picks up the foul. Third team foul. He's got the post flashing if he wants it. He looks for the bomb. Gets it to fall. Are you kidding me? Show me how he did that. Good fake. Jumps into the defender. Number 14 with a finger roll. bombs from outside. It's good. They strip him in a basketball. Got a little too fancy. Too much mustard there, baby. Gave it up. It's stolen. Work it inside, and he tries a drop step. Defensively, nice job. Oh, great job using his footwork defensively to beat him to the spot. Number two is eager and excited to compete. And you know what, Brad? I'm excited for him. He's putting on a performance. We're going to move it around the perimeter. And he'll kick it back outside. The fake. Dump it inside. 
That spin move's not going to work against a defense I'll like that. I tell you, they did a great job scouting post play because they were really anticipating the spin. He beats him to the punch defensively. What a terrific job. Footwork really excellent on a post player. I tell you, there's a great job getting post position. Hey, Brad, that shot's impossible to stop. It's unbelievable. It's not utilized enough. The frustration right there. He's open if he wants the shot. That was a great, great effort right there, trying to play that passing lane. Anticipated really well. Playing for the steal in the post, and he didn't get it. I tell you, tried to make the spectacular play, but now he's embarrassed. Isolated on the outside, they're working around the arc, looking for the open jumper from right at the circle. For two, doesn't go. There's the block. Ball down low, puts it on the floor. Turn around, fade away. target takes away the pass number 15 is pounded on his way up oh and you can tell by the look on his face he wasn't expecting the whistle on him wow look at the facial expression he says me he goes to the line for the first time first shot is good And he got them both. Double team now, bad angle. Get that sucker out of the game, man. They get out on the break. Slam. On the outside. On the dribble, gives it up. Number 21 is called for the foul. Third personal foul. High post flasher is open. From the baseline, they'll bring it out on top. There's a double team waiting there. And one too many dribbles and a steal. For the bucket. Great play to take that to the basket. Looking for a good shot. Goes up for two. The Pirates have got to continue to get him the ball. Brad, he's on fire. Moving it around the perimeter. He attempts the three. Great job of running the defender into the screen, but a nice jam. Working it around the perimeter. Gave it up from the top of the key. Off the rim and no good. From center court, way off target. 
At the end of the first half, the Pirates are trailing by 26. Now let's rewind a little bit here and watch the play of the half. Number two is having, I guess, an average game. He didn't have a great first half, but as a star player, he knows how to step it up and get them back into this one. Look for him to flip the switch on in the second half and try to make things happen. Dick, two great players now heading into the second half. We watched them through the first half, and they played it pretty dead even. We'll see what happens here in the second half. I tell you, there's no doubt they're PT peers. They're prime-time performers. They like the big moment, and they make big plays. Number two is whistled for the foul. Ball comes back out from the post. I tell you, Brad, you got to have a post player that anticipates and knows how to find the open man. He hits the tough shot. I tell you, he's not going down with ease, Brad. Puts the ball loose. Looking for the foul. Basket falls despite the contact. Out of the circle, they work it around the perimeter. He shields himself from the screen and scores the basket. Momentary look from three-point land from the top of the key. Off the rim and no good. That was really a nonchalant pass. Get that sucker out of the game, man. <laughs> the ball goes out of bounds. Dick, how's that backcourt comparison shaping up, do you think? Hey, Brad, that's a question that these coaches should be asking themselves. How can they, as coaches, get the most out of their guards? Are they quick enough to pressure the opponent, or offensively, can they create off the dribble? To me, it's about finding the weaknesses and attacking them. three-point land. He nails the shot. Excellent spacing. That's so important to a good offensive set. It's even more important to have talented guards like they have. Yeah, that helps. He puts up the tray. He gets the bucket. the rejection. They just keep shutting the door. Picks off the pass. He gets that ball in the low block and immediately goes with a shot. I tell you, did a great job creating a good angle too when he goes up and under. He seals off the defensive player. They'll work it around the arc. On the dribble, gives it up. And they come with a double team to stop it. I tell you, he missed the post guy. The post guy had the great angle, was locking on the box. Tries for two. In and out. For two, perfectly executed. The Pirates are trailing by 22. They work the perimeter. He unloads a three. Oh, yes. in front to take it away. They'd like to get it inside to the low block. 
Unable to so far. Nice job of packing it in defensively. Yeah, and really doing a great job packing it in. Then a great job of anticipating that lateral pass. Had him in the low block, but opted against it. Launches away. Way off target. Trying to get that ball movement, get that good spacing. Great Ooh. pressure, great double team. Really explosive. Drops the bucket despite the harm. Another turnover. And we're not talking out the turnovers either. Number two is charged with the foul. Oh, and you can see the frustration as he picks up the foul. Oh, that's a bad, bad foul right there, Brad. Two shots. Makes the shot. Both. He converts on that free throw line, and that's major. That's seven unanswered. He intercepts it. They're working around the perimeter. Gave it up. He shoots from the top of the circle. Number 15, Grains the three-pointer. We'll get back to the action here after the timeout. Coach looks on, focused, a lot of intensity, a lot of emotion. Looks at a three. He drains the bucket. Got to take some pride on the defensive end. For the bucket. I did a great job of the ball fake that created the up and under move. And good footwork. It's essential with an up and under move to utilize good footwork. On the dribble, gives it up. Here's a double team. Picked out of the air. Easy bucket coming here. The point guard takes the pass in the paint. There was no doubt about that one. Intercepted. Gliding in for the jam. Sliding and gliding. Nobody rotated over. The defense moves so slowly. He shoots from the top of the circle. Seton Hall are on a nice little run at the moment. Hey, they have to keep pushing and seeing if they can force a timeout. Spin move not successful, Dick. I did a great job on the defense, not allowing him to make that turn. I did a great job protecting the basketball, getting deep post position, and the jump hook is so effective. Gave it up. Goes up for two. Can't get the shot to drop. the dribble gives it up trying to draw the foul goes in number one with the foul 
Points off turnovers, Dick, a stat I know coaches pay a lot of attention to. Hey, Brad, it sure is. You want to limit your opponent's number of points off turnovers. Ultimately, you want to nullify the easy baskets. He was guarding him tightly, and then he went for the steal. An unsuccessful attempt resulting in a personal foul. If you get the steal, you're a hero. But you always run the risk of committing a foul when you go for that steal. Number 14 goes to the line for the first time. Gets his first. They have found their stroke at the strike tonight, Dick. This has always been an excellent free throw shooting bunch. Gets two at the charity strike. Steals a pass. Pushes it up. Oh, what a strip, Red. Hey, if you don't handle that rock with care, it'll have cost you. And it cost him that time. Great elevator man, man. That's the elevator guy. What a high riser. They go inside and now back outside. I tell you, inside outside action always works. There's the trap. They work it back to the outside. The ball goes out of play. Let's go to the third member of our broadcast team. Here's Aaron Andrews. Well, guys, the difference in scoring jumps out at me. It's a matter of one guy focusing and taking advantage of his shot opportunities, and he's making the most of it. Leans in. We've got a blowout so far, folks. Hey, when you're down this much late, you have to make sure you don't fall into any bad habits. You have to treat this like a practice now. Top of the circle. Sinks the shot. He launches a three. Comes up empty. Up and inside. Kicks off the lazy pass. Problem with that when you front, if you don't get some backside help, you're in trouble. Well, you gotta get help because you gotta see ball man. That's essential when you play on there and you're fronting. They move it into the front court. And the ball goes out of play. I've seen you out there with pom-poms, Mr. Vitale, but not looking that good. I'll tell you what, don't look that good. I can't dance like that, baby. Dickey's still applying great pressure on the dribbler. Working it around the perimeter. Tries for two. Great play to take that to the basket. Two thousand five, two thousand six marked quite an amazing year for both the men's and the women's basketball teams at LSU. Both teams went to the Final Four, which is really amazing for the school. I think it says a lot about the athletic department. Having both programs go that deep in the postseason is remarkable. That doesn't happen that often. Number fourteen is asking the crowd for some encouragement. You know, Brad, he wants the fans backing for this defensive possession. Turnover. That spin move's not going to work against a defense like that. I tell you, they did a great job scouting post play because they were really anticipating the spin. Executes the baby hook. Seton Hall are putting together a pretty good run here. Execution's been the key, baby. Takes the pass in the paint. The pressure that basketball help one another communicate. Got a nice screen. Top of the circle, they work it around the perimeter. Top of the circle, he hits it. He 
He goes up strong, and that's going to be an offensive foul. Oh, great call by the official. He beat him to the spot. That's essential defensively. Inside and now back outside. I tell you, inside outside action always works. He dials long distance, goes. For two. Perfectly executed. Great defensive play. Anticipated well. When you're an anticipator, you've got a chance to do well. A lot of guys that react If you're reacting, you're one step behind the action. a great move to draw the foul. That is a great play. These kids have all the momentum now. Look at them. They're celebrating. Hey, hey, why not? It's a team sport, right? Number 31 to the line, shooting two. He can't get one to fall. Can't miss free throws, Dick. It's going to kill you somewhere down the line. Well, you got to convert. That's the one thing like football special situation. You got to be able to execute there. Using his size with a power move. Oh, what a power goal. Jump stop. Takes the ball to the goal. Strong. Look at that spacing. The kick out for the bucket. Great play to take that to the basket. Let's watch the defense down on the low block. See, first initially he wants a three-quarter. Then he plays it where he gets a good post position. So he's able to get the ball. A good rebound position, a good block out. And that's essential in the post. A lot of guys don't realize part of the post play is ultimately to block out and get good rebound position. Shot blocked from behind. He set him up nicely. Number four got it. He gets the foul and the bucket. That's how you do it when you want to win, baby. Those are the types of plays you want a lot of. These kids are on a roll. Look at them celebrating with one another. Hey, can you blame them, Brad? They're playing well. He misses it. The defensive rebound coming the other way. They need to get out and run their lanes now. Goes up for two. He can't get the bucket to fall. He didn't have the good angle. They should have got it to him about a second earlier. On the dribble, gives it up. Picks off the pass. There appears to be a mismatch in the post. Can they get him the ball, though? He puts it up. He rips the nets for another score. He's absolutely unconscious. Tries for two. Sweet-looking shot. He is super. He really is. Isolated on the outside. They work it around the arc, looking for the open jumper. Got to think right now. Got to focus defensively. 
Leaning in, trying to draw contact. Looking for a good shot. Double team now, bad angle. Fake. Makes the block. He's trying to see if there's an easy one out there. Jumps in. Dick, it's really been a while since I've seen a team shoot like this. Hey, every once in a while, you'll get a squad that gets on a tear and simply makes your jaw drop. It's fun to watch, isn't it, Brad? Dick, he's working on that low block on that right hip. I'll tell you one thing, he's trying to deny him the ball initially, but the defense really doesn't do a great job of sealing him off. He shoots from the top of the key. Off the rim and no good. They'll work it around the arc. And they come with a double team to stop it. We're going to move it around the perimeter. Defender knocked the ball loose, but the offense got it back. Fires away. That was nice. Let's it fly. He shows the sweet touch. That was a great, great effort right there. Trying to play that passing lane. Anticipating really well. Working around the perimeter. Sets a screen for his teammate. The shot from the baseline. The Pirates have found a player who cannot seem to miss, Dick. They need to keep feeding the ball. It's simple. They say forget about it. And then he does a little dribbling act here and turns it over. Up and inside. From right in the circle, he gets the shot to fall. Show the replay on that. Takes away the pass. For two. Sinks it. In the paint. Executes the baby hook. I tell you, great job protecting the basketball, getting deep post position, and the jump hook is so effective. They work the perimeter. There's a double team waiting there. Number two with the steal. From way outside. Got it! Number 15 picks up the foul. Second team foul. Well, Mr. Vital, let's take a look at our backcourt production. Hey, I'll tell you one thing, Brad. You look at the stats, you want to find out if your backcourt is playing well. Well, you want to ensure that your guards keep the number of turnovers down. That's a must. Reduce turnovers. So many games are won and lost by teams turning the ball over. Turnovers, missed opportunities happen, baby, when you turn the rock over. Well, Dick, what's the front court production looking like for you? Well, you know, Brad, your bigs really can influence how your teams play. Rebound, blocking shots, ultimate shots are all very important skills which your big players should possess. With a tremendous block. Time to pick up the defense here now. They'd like to get it inside to the low block. Unable to so far. Nice job of packing it in defensively. Yeah, really doing a great job packing it in. Did a great job of anticipating that lateral pass. And again, let's take a look at that State Farm drive of the game, Dick. Hey, the ability to get to the paint is one thing, Brad, but he also demonstrated the ability to finish as well. That's awesome, baby, with a capital A.
Well, now it's just a matter, Dick, isn't it of clock management here? Right, Brad. Stay up the foul in order to stop the clock, Brad. As we see the game situation here. Hey, Brad, these are elements of the game which coaches are really responsible for. Calling timeouts at the right time, knowing which way the possession arrow is pointing. All factors that are important in close games. Foul, and that stops the clock again. Hey, Brad, you want to get to the line early and often. You end up getting your opponents into foul trouble, and it's also an opportunity to get some points. Second shot, no good. They want to talk about it right here, Dick. They got to find a way to chip into this lead before it's too late. Get ready to resume the action. The lead is up day. They could be starting to pull away here, Dick. The small forward receives the ball. Great defense. This whole team that's on the floor is quick. But so is the defense, and they do a nice job. I can't emphasize it enough, Brad. It's important to get to the charity strike. He makes the front end of the one and one. Hits his second. Dick is 10 points safe at this point. Are you kidding me? 10 scratches wouldn't be safe with a half of this time left. He fires from long range. Don't waste a lot of time. Foul right away. And yet another foul as they're just trying to hang on here. Well, Dick, there's a look at the foul situation. Well, you know, Brad, a lot of times the first team to the bonus will get the advantage. That means they're playing aggressive basketball. It means they get to the charity strike quicker and have an opportunity to rack up some easy points. Gets the second. Trying to get that ball movement, get that good spacing. Shot clock is dead. On the outside, got some room. They'll work it around the arc. And the ball goes out of bounds. There's the turnover situation for the half dick. I'll tell you, the lower the number, the better off your team will be. With too many turnovers, the likelihood of you playing in a game at the end drops significantly. Dumps it in. Gave it up. Dick, we know the TV business, you've got to have marquee matchups, but it's still about team basketball. Well, I think it played out fairly well, but it's all within the realm of the team. The one thing I like about the Stars, they're playing as a unit with their teammates. Seton Hall accepts a difficult loss. It's always tough to lose to a team that you know you can beat. It's been a fun game, and as always, my partners alongside have enjoyed you being with us. For Dick Vitale and Aaron Andrews, I'm Brad Nessler. Good night, everybody.